Hi, I'm David Machinetti, and I'm a third year PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Ashutosh Tiwari. And I'm also the outreach director of the Nanostructured Materials Research Laboratory at the University of Utah. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Haritha Sri Yadanapudi. She recently graduated from our group and is currently going to join uh, Intel as a process engineer. Good morning, Haritha. Good morning, David. So you came from India in 2014. You've done good work here for two years. Have a couple papers, a patent, uh, some uh, presentations at MRS. So and now you have this job offer. So how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling really great. I feel privileged to work with Dr. Tiwari along with the wonderful lab members. Without whom, I wouldn't have achieved all this. So, you know, obviously we know something about what you've done as far as your work here, but what has been your academic path in India prior to coming here? So, I did my schooling from St. Francis Girls High School, and then I did my undergraduation in Metallurgical Engineering from JNT Hyderabad, which is one of the renowned schools in India. And then my bachelor's thesis was mainly focused on the synthesis of titanium nanotubes, and that's how the academic path was. So when you were looking for um, schools, uh, you know, I guess you decided at one point you wanted to come to the United States. Uh, so how did you find uh, NMRL particularly and uh, Dr. Tiwari and, you know, make you know, the decision that you wanted to join our group? So during the process of application, uh, I definitely wanted to go to the grad school in the U.S. And then I was going through different research areas of various professors throughout the U.S. And then I came across Dr. Tiwari's web page and I found Dr. Tiwari's lab to be very really diverse and he was working under, he was working related to energy storage devices which I was, which I was always fascinated with. And also his lab facilities were highly exceptional which we don't find in the other universities as well as back at home. So that is why I decided that I will go with the University of Utah and contact Dr. Tiwari about the research position and try to learn as much as I can, like improve my experimental skills and the research skills that I didn't have back in India. So over the past two years you've been here, you've done, um, you had two first author papers, one of them in a very prestigious journal, Nature Scientific Reports. Uh, two conference presentations, and even a patent, which is a, a very good amount of material and work, and it rivals even some of the work that's been done by other PhD students. Uh, so, how are you feeling about all these accomplishments? I feel really proud and elated. It's only because of the good collaborations that I had and a very good teamwork that I had amongst my fellow peers, and I would always thank Dr. Tiwari for giving me a wonderful opportunity that he provided and I would be very grateful to my parents for sending me to the U.S. to pursue my uh, dream of getting a MS degree and improving my research skills. So focusing uh, more specifically on this um, paper and scientific reports, uh, can you tell us a little more about what's hap what your research was on that topic? So in the scientific reports we have published on the energy storage devices which is a supercapacitor. So as everyone is aware we have uh, batteries in our laptops and mobile phones and all these batteries are lithium ion batteries and they are not biodegradable and when we uh, throw it in the dustbin or throw it outside they just kind of pile up causing global warming. So what we thought was to fabricate an electrode which is environmental friendly too, but uh, it should have a very high energy density and power density when compared to the batteries. So that's when we thought supercapacitors as one of the main topic. And since we were focusing on environmental friendly materials, we thought of taking uh, something which is naturally available from the mother nature and then we choose wood as one of our material and then we impregnated some of the nanoparticles into the wood and then with a novel, uh, novel synthesis techniques 
and we studied its influence on the material characteristics such as the surface morphology, the pore size or the pore structure and the distribution of the nanoparticles and how it affects the performance of the supercapacitor and we did various uh, state of art techniques such as the XRD, XPS, TEM which is kind of not available everywhere and then we also focused on the electrochemical characterizations in which we can determine the characteristics of a supercapacitor and from the results that we have obtained we had a highest specific capacitance uh, that has ever reported till date in the nickel based supercapacitor devices as well as in the carbon based supercapacitors. We also had a very high energy density and high power density which is practically which is very much useful for practical applications. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic work that we have uh, published in the scientific reports. So your second paper, um, the more recent paper, yeah, you're focusing on um, transparent wood. So would you mind uh, commenting uh, more on what's going on with that project? So uh, while I was here in the na Nanostructured Materials Research Laboratory, I was mainly focusing uh, my research towards the energy storage and energy harvesting. So apart from the energy storage and harvesting, I also developed my interest towards the energy management. So as you must, like everyone must be aware that the buildings are constructed with the wood and uh, for the light to transmit, like to, for the sunlight to transmit, we use glasses and plastics, which are bio, which are not biodegradable. And when something happens, they they just uh, pile up on the earth and causing the global warming. Uh, so what we have thought was, why not we use the same wood and make them transparent and use it as a glass material so that you can reduce the amount of the intensity, like you can reduce the amount of electricity that you are consuming and the energy that is being reduced can be utilized for the other purposes such as in the industry or in the transportation or to meet the energy demands from the current increasing population. Mm -hmm. And then we have decided that we need to make the transparent wood and we were kind of uh, in a dilemma of how to make the uh, transparent wood but one thing that we were for sure was that if we remove the coloring agent that is present in the wood and still maintain its three-dimensional structure with a great strength, with its high strength and high modulus, then the wood can become transparent. So one of the hypotheses that we are proposing in the present project was, is to remove the coloring agents that are present in the wood, that is mainly the lignin and then uh, infiltrate some polymer such that the polymer's refractive index is similar to the refractive index of the wood so that all the light transmits through the transparent wood rather than diffracting or scattering and then uh, for the heat treated so as to obtain a transparent wood. We have been successful in making the transparent wood of various thicknesses and then uh, determining its optical transmittance and also determining its mechanical strength and we found that the uh, transparent wood that we obtained has about 70% transmission which is uh, highly exceptional and also it, is, uh, it has a very high percentage of haze which is mainly that it reduces the amount of scattering mm -hmm. and also that uh, it had a very high mechanical strength when compared to the normal wood so all these properties can make the transparent wood as one of the potential material for a next generation building block. So that's the main goal of the transparent wood project that I'm currently working on. So Tiwari's mentioned on multiple occasions, um, you know, that when he comes into the lab on the in the night or on the weekends, you know, he often sees you in there, and you know, it's kind of well known that you have a really strong work ethic. So why, what do you think is responsible for this, your motivation? So back in India, I never had any research experience, nor hands-on experience with experiments. So after coming here, I took time to adjust, uh, to adapt, the, adapt to the surroundings and to learn more about the research ethics and skills that are required. I've worked with senior people in the lab and I've seen them working hard, publishing high impact papers 
and now they are in a very good position and seeing them I dreamt of being one of them at the end of my master's degree so that is what motivated me at first and then uh, I started working on energy storage devices, energy harvesting and energy management which further made me motivate myself such that I, do, I set an impact to the scientific society and give something back to the scientific uh, organizations. So, I know you, you've learned a lot, obviously, since you've been here for two years um, and accomplished all this. Uh, so, what do you think you've learned here that you can apply to your future career? It has been a great experience of working two years over here. Uh, I've learned to work hard, never discourage myself, and also to keep uh, self-motivated. And whenever I encounter some problems, I either need to uh, resolve it by finding out what the problem is, where the problem is going wrong, and also to analyze why is it going wrong and what should be done, what should be the next step. And also what I've learned is that if something is not working out and I'm not able to resolve it, I have to uh, make a scientific discussion amongst my peers so that even they can, these, these scientific discussions can help me in uh, getting some ideas that my fellow peers have. So I would take all these along with me for my future career. And also the patent that I worked on, the uh, uh, publications that I have would uh, surely have an impact on my career. And all these skills might help me in one form or the other, like from moving from one position to the other position. So to wrap things up, uh, what is your message for current and future NMRL members? Uh, the main suggestion I would give is that work hard, make your short term goals, fulfill them and have the perseverance, self motivation and I would tell to utilize as much as the resources as you can. Oh, uh, well, uh, thank you for your time, Aretha, and I uh, hope you do well in your future endeavors. Uh, so this has been an interview of Haritha Yadanapui after her graduation. Uh, we hope this gives some kind of idea of what we do here in NMRL and uh, is educational for the viewers. Thank you. Thank you.